Hey! Today we are going to be talking about this little book here by Jasper Ford called The Air Affair. Originally published in 2001. The Air Affair is set in an alternative England in 1985. It's actually a series, and this is the first in the series, and it centers around the main character, Thursday Next. Thursday Next is a female, and she is also a war veteran and a police officer. In this version of England, there has been a 100-year war with Russia, and this war kind of weaves its way throughout the entire book. Along with this war, there are also time vortexes, pet dodos, and zeppelins. Thursday has lost some of her colleagues and continues to lose some of her colleagues in the line of duty. The love interest in the book is named Landon and was her brother's best friend and also somebody who she had a previous relationship with that she is struggling to rekindle. The book is written loosely around the style of a hard-boiled detective novel and the main villain in this is Acheron Hades. With the book being one long pun, it was really enjoyable to be reading it out loud with somebody you could share the jokes with. I understand that the book was intentionally written in the style of a private eye novel, but uh, it's just not to my liking. The sentences are very short, everything is sort of laid out in front of the reader, there's not a lot of use of metaphor, it's just very linear, I guess, is a way of describing the way that it's written. I also feel like if I had read Jane Eyre, I would have enjoyed the author. Something that really struck me about this book is the fact that it is written by a male from a female perspective. The female protagonist has what are typically seen as pretty masculine roles in life. She is the main character, and she is a war veteran, and she is also a police officer, and she's part of what they call the spec ops, and she's a literatech. So this world is very focused on literature. Literature is very important, not just to this section of the police force, but to everyone in England and presumably the world. It's really interesting that something that is so important is kind of resting in her hands. She's kind of supposed to be the caretaker of this very important um, literary world. As I mentioned, the book is completely lacking of typical gender constructs. Thursday is the main character. It's written from a first-person narrative, so we know exactly what's going on in her life. And part of that is probably making kind of literary allusions to the book in question, Jane Eyre. Not only that, but Thursday's love interest, Landon Park Lane, is only a love interest. We really don't know much about him except for what Thursday is willing to identify to the reader. Something to keep in mind while reading The Air Affair, whether you've read Jane Eyre or not, is that there's a specific story that The Air Affair is representing Jane Eyre to have been. So in The Air Affair, they are saying that this wonderful text that everybody loves actually ends in a rather disappointing way, but everyone still loves it and it ends with Jane going off to India with her um, cousin, I believe, and doing kind of charity work over there. And it's a very anticlimactic kind of book, but everyone still loves it. They love the Brontes, etc., etc. So, unlike you, I found it to be a much better reading experience because I hadn't read Jane Eyre before, so there were really climactic moments of The Eyre Affair, which were also fairly climactic moments in Jane Eyre, and because I hadn't read it, I wasn't reading the airfare going, India, what? I mean, I kind of felt that way. I, I was pretty sure that that's not how the story of Jane Eyre ended, but it was kind of an exciting feeling to know, okay, I know that this isn't true, but I have no idea what's actually going to happen. I think it really lent, it, lent itself to people that haven't read Jane Eyre, and now I'm really interested in the story of Jane Eyre and the fact that Thursday really identifies with that character. I think it would be really cool if you had read it, but because I haven't, it's made it really enjoyable, and now I want to go and appreciate this really classic tale that, you know, has stood the test of time. I think that for me it was just a matter of um, all the little nuances. Like, I feel like because I didn't know the story of Jane Eyre, uh, having not read it myself either, um, that he would make sort of like puns and jokes sometimes. And I'd be like, I think that that's funny, but I don't know what context to put it in. I think that it would be advantageous for me to have read um, Jane Eyre. Maybe I would be able to get more out of the text. I disagree. I think that 
as you said, it's not a very difficult read. Um, it's not really working your brain in the sense that there's a lot of metaphors, not that metaphors are that difficult to understand, but it's more stretching your imagination. Just the way it was written reminded me of watching a TV show. Is that a bad thing? I, it's not what I look for in my books. Like, I think that Fair the, enough. I think that the medium of the book is such that it gives you, it should be able to give you like such deeper understanding of the material. But we could move on to talking about our reading experience at this point because, especially towards the end of the book, there were real instances where you really had to be the one reading the material because there were all these little jokes, mm -hmm. these little added pieces that you needed to read and you couldn't, I mean you could do that. I, I would love to see this book turn into a movie. It translate very easily. But he makes use of the fact that people are solitary reading from a page what's going on. There's a point in the book right uh, towards the end where there are mm. these little, um, they call them bookworms, and it's a kind of genetically modified worm that Thursday next uncle um, kind of Invents, creates, sports, whatever. <laughs> breeds, whatever, <laughs> and they eat words. So he like lets them feast on a dictionary and they eat words and they help with one of his other inventions. They're kind of part and parcel. And so there's a point where the bookworms get really agitated and upset and they start like hiccuping and farting and what they pick up and fart are hyphens or capitals mm -hmm. and you get to see that on the page. Yeah, that was very and I clever. think, yeah, that's really clever and it's disappointing that, you know, I was the one that read it so you didn't get to see it. Like I would kind of but, hold the page open to you and stuff and yeah, I was like, this is, you But know. it also came across in your voice. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It was, uh, but you're right, like, in that instance it was a very, like, clever use of the format. Yeah, and I think it's unfair to say that he's not making use of the medium of a book. I mean, people can write different ways and people can have different preferences. Some people like reading, you know, that Dan Brown guy. Like, it's yeah. it's a thriller, but you're not watching... I mean, it's a movie now, but you're not watching a movie. You've decided to flip through 300 pages of text instead. And, and I, I think there's something to be said for somebody who can move a story along that quickly. Yeah. Like, there's just constantly action going on, and, and yet... These characters are very well developed. The thing is that I've never been a fan of Tom Clancy or well, neither have I. Dan Brown or that style of writing. Like uh, I don't. It's too flat for me to enjoy. I don't but this sound book like a total, is not total, flat total, like, at right all. Now. <laughs> very much like what's on the page is what you get. But that that can't be true because in terms of a deeper meaning, like, there's time travel. There's so many crazy things that are normalized, and I think that might be why, like, you find it so lackluster, because he's done such a good job. It's such a talent to say to a reader, this is just how this world is. No big deal. And everyone else is just like, cool, that's great. I didn't find it very interesting. It was not a... I felt like he was trying to be a page-turner, but... The, the end, yes, was very, like, very, very fast-paced and all that. Um, and interesting concepts. I felt like there was a lot sort of, like, crammed into the, the last, like, quarter of the book, which made it very enjoyable. That part was wicked. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just didn't, I wasn't excited. Given the style, I thought I should be excited. I think I would recommend it to my mom, because okay. she really likes mystery novels. Okay. So somebody who is perhaps a fan of that genre would, uh, appreciate, I think, again, like, I think they would appreciate the book even more because they would have this context to frame it in. If you're looking for, like, a light cottage read over a weekend, give her hell. Like, it's a good, it'll, it'll make you laugh. Well, unlike Greg, I don't think that this book is as simple as he's claiming that it is. There's nothing wrong with page turners, thrillers, detective novels, anything like that. They're not part of my favorite genres either, but, um, uh, I find it interesting that you made that comparison, considering I, again, I haven't read any Tom Clancy, but I don't think Tom Clancy cares about 
the literary world in the same way that Jasper Ford does. And again, not, that's not a problem, but I don't want to recommend this to people that are looking for a light read. Yes, it's quick, and there are light elements, but there's also a lot of serious stuff going on. And I think it would be a really good read for anyone that's looking for something that is fast-paced, but you do have to think about. Thank you so much for watching. You'll have to let us know whether or not you've read this book and what you thought of it. And if you haven't read the book, let us know whether you actually want to or not, who you're going to side with. Bye! Common in your... <laughs> Yes. <laughs>